and violates the Constitution uh, on, a, on an even more deeper level. So what I just played for you is, I think, the most important soundbite of 2016. Incidentally, I know you didn't hear it anywhere else because no one has a memory like I do for it, sound and radio. Nobody. Nobody. Can, I'm sorry. Period. I'm, I'm boasting. Too bad. I just told you something. That soundbite will be heard over and over and over again this week on radio because I found it. And, of course, all the other hosts are going to have their production staff working like galley slaves around the clock to find it. They'll probably pull it right from my show because I don't own it. God bless them. I don't own it. I'm like Lao Tzu. I do not own it. Take it and run with it. Like Abby Hoffman said, steal the soundbite. It's that simple. The world must hear it over and over again. But remember where you heard it first on the Savage Nation. It is the most important soundbite of the year. I'm going to play it again and again on this show. We're going to play it, I think, every day. Elena Kagan's going to be heard every day on the Savage Nation. Now, I got some great callers. I got to take a few of them, if you don't mind. We got callers on all these topics from around the country. Let us go to John on WVNN Radio. John, go ahead, please. Hey, Dr. Savage. Um, I, I can elucidate on uh, how Mr. Obama is, is not a psychopath, but that he is a sociopath. A sociopath is an insane person who cleverly mimics human behavior but feels no human compassion, guilt, or remorse, or conscience. And his manifestation of that insanity is his pathological dishonesty. The man doesn't know the difference between the truth and a lie. He only knows what he wants it to be true, and he woos and charms people to get what he wants because what he wants is the truth for him, and it should be the truth for you. And he doesn't understand why you don't get it. <laughs> now, I think you're talking about the president of the United States as a sociopath, correct, John? I am. He's a sociopath, and he's a pathological liar. He's not a psychopath. The psychopath displays the, the manifestation of his insanity, his psychotic behavior. He can't mit cleverly mimic human, human behavior. He or she is out of control. Mr. Obama is very much in control, as you can see, and he does woo and charm to get his way. But again, it, isn't as though he's a, it is not as though he's aware he's lying, because the lie, what he says is what he wants to be true, and therefore it becomes true for him. And that is, that is a classic cycle. Uh, uh, listen sorry. to what he just said about gun control. He said, I have the legal authority. Do you, Robert, do you have that again? We have to listen to this again in terms of this discussion of is he a psychopath or a, uh, or a sociopath. Listen again, Robert. Play that one, what he just said. I've just received back uh, a report from uh, Attorney General Lynch. Sure, just received uh, back. Director called me as well as uh, Deputy Director Correct. Brandon about Correct. some Correct. of the ideas and initiatives that uh, they think can make a difference. And uh, the good news is, is that these are not only uh, recommendations that are well within uh, my legal authority uh, and the executive branch, Liar. but uh, they're also ones that... Uh, the overwhelming majority of the American people... All right, he's a total liar. Gun owners. They're not allowed to make laws in the executive branch. And by the way, did you know they cannot make law in the executive branch? Did you know that? Do, do any of you know that? I've studied this in and out. I could even cite chapter and verse on it. And I'm no legal scholar. Anyone who knows the rudiments of politics knows that this government was set up so that a dictator like he never arose. But here he is arising in front of your eyes, a vampire again, to suck more blood out of the Constitution. He does not have the legal authority to write law. He's going to make believe he's not writing law, by the way. What he's going to say, the liar, the sociopath is going to say that he's only interpreting the law. Well, will anyone listening to this show tell me how you can interpret what Elena Kagan said to mean that he has the right to control guns? Where does he have that right? Listen again to Elena Kagan as she was being confirmed to become a Supreme Court justice, and she is a flaming liberal. Listen. Is there any doubt uh, after the court's decision, Heller and McDonald, that the Second Amendment to the Constitution secures a fundamental right for an individual to own a firearm, use it for self-defense in their home? There is no doubt, Senator Leahy. That is binding precedent, entitled to all the respect uh, of binding precedent in, in, in any case. So that is settled law. Settled law. All right, I can ridicule her accent because she sounds like the relatives I ran away from in New York, but that's besides the point. It is settled law. And since it is settled law, and even uh, uh, Kami Leahy, another one from Vermont, said that an individual has the right 
to own a weapon, a firearm. Didn't he say firearm, I think, uh, for self-defense? Uh, there's no legal uh, um, avenue for Obama to use that is legal. There's only an avenue of pure uh, sociopathic behavior. That's what we're talking about, John, isn't it? The sociopath is inventing the fact that he thinks he has the right. Isn't that it? It, it is it is exactly that, and, and trust me, and I, I had the misfortune to, to live with growing up a, a pathological liar. They truly do believe that what they say is true, but it's it's found it's founded not in fact, it's founded in their desire for this to be true. I I want this to be true, therefore it becomes true for me. And then you that's a telltale marker of a pathological liar when they look at you angry and disturbed because you don't get it. I just told you this is so. Why don't you get it? That is Obama in a nutshell. Yeah, no, you're 100% right. He as a kid was never, I would think, never disciplined, never chastised. Everything was, uh, all the skids were greased for him by his uh, uh, grandparents who raised him. You know that, correct? Yes, and uh, I've, I've listened to an interview with a high school chum of his, and she said uh, Barry, as he was known, was, was his brand was being a mooch. He mooched drugs and cigarettes and food and he laughed about it and he and that he was such a liar he was a compulsive and non-stop compulsive liar she was astounded when she found out he was a senator she said my god how did that guy get to that position but then there's a cult of personality around him and he's a he's a magic guy inside a magic bubble i guess but it's history's gonna well john to we're all wringing our hands but we got to stop wringing our hands uh we know we got to start wringing something else like the phones. Back in a minute on the Savage Nation. It is a fact that Obama is an agent provocateur as well as a president. He lives to uh, provoke. He gets his, uh, as we used to say, his jollies by provoking the white middle class as often as possible. He has a vendetta against the Constitution. He's gotten his way on everything. I don't think he's failed at anything that he set out to do that the far left wanted him to do. And yet it's not enough for him. And that's what checks and balances are supposed to stop, is the emergence of a dictator. A president cannot write law. A president can only interpret law. If I remember correctly, and I'll have to check it during the break, it was Truman who was overridden by the Supreme Court in the following case. It was a steel strike. And... Truman intervened and tried to write law, in essence, and end the strike. The Supreme Court said that he can't write law. He can only interpret the law, and they overrode the president. I'm convinced that no matter what Obama does on guns, will be overridden by the Supreme Court. That is, unless Justice Roberts' uh, missing photographs suddenly appear again. The same missing photographs that were allegedly used to give us socialized slash Cuban style medicine against the wishes of virtually everyone in America except the deadbeats. A number of great calls are holding. If you're leaving us now after two hours, sayonara for today. See you tomorrow. If you're just joining us, there's another huge hour across America right here on the Savage Nation with all the new stories that will be popping up, which is false police brutality, false global warming, False kindness from Obama, etc. Right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7287. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Blue Monday. I didn't hear me on Monday, dude. Why didn't you just have to hear the music once again? We have another failure on the Savage Nation. So uh, these things happen every day on the show. Every time we switch gears, we wind up with no music, no sound. Thus far, I think you still have a host who's talking. Uh, can I be heard, gentlemen, in the studio there? I have no idea. Uh, the phone number is 855 
This means we have open lines, 855-400-SAVAGE is the phone number. This is our number three. ISIS, which is the Arab version of Hitler, uh, people have called him Islamo-fascist for years, but the ISIS Hitlerites have trotted out the latest child terrorist in an execution video. They show a little bastard in a camouflage suit, a child. And it's been released by the Islamic State, showing the murder of five detainees while a preschool-age budding piece of human trash threatens more attacks with his little stinking finger pointing to the heavens where Allah awaits him, the brainwashed murderer. The terror tot appears at the end of the video wearing a camouflage military outfit with an ISIS headband. The Juno Jihadi says, We will kill Kufar over there! as he points into the vast expanse of the desert. The poor prisoners speaking Arabic are introduced as the enemy. And I don't want to read any more. This leads me to the only solution to this problem, which is a nuclear weapon. They have strongholds. There are tactical nuclear weapons. They should all be killed along with their families. I don't want to hear about collateral damage. When it comes to ISIS, there is no collateral damage. They're all terrorists down to the last fingernail of the last ISIS child. Now, I know this sounds harsh, and I'm not saying it for effect, but there is only one solution to this kind of insanity. This is a cancer, and like any cancer, it has to be wiped out before it spreads. Obama has let this cancer spread. I believe he's responsible for its creation, but I, I don't want to go into that right now. ISIS is a Frankenstein of the Obama administration and of several other Western governments that created this from the remnants of the Iraqi army under, under Saddam. I've, I've traced this for you. I'm going to get very agitated. I don't mean to. They created it from the Republican Guard, which is why they're so skilled in their warfare, because these are very skilled generals running ISIS. Never forget who they are. These are skilled generals from Saddam's army. They formed a new army with weapons and special forces training, and they then went rogue, and they started to attract the scum of the earth, promising them uh, heaven itself. And so now when you see children like the Hitler Youth being uh, initiated into this death cult, what is wrong with this idea of mine? You have to stop the cancer. You need to use the strongest chemotherapeutic agents that we have to kill the cancer before it spreads. We have the weapons, but we don't have the leadership. And the fact of the matter is we absolutely need to stop them before it gets worse. At that note, on that note, we'll take our first call of this hour. Ron on WABC, line number seven. Go ahead, please. Yes, Michael. Uh, I've been listening to you earlier uh, regarding uh, Obama's mental state. <laughs> Uh, my background is somewhat in psychology, uh, and I wanted to add to your conversation here that I feel that uh, uh, Obama is basically a malignant narcissist. And you, you've mentioned narcissism before, and a number of people have, but they haven't really touched on the core issue here. I feel that the man is uh, acting out unconscious, unconsciously driven conflicts out on the world stage symbolically with an attempt to ra to try to resolve unconscious issues. Well, you know, I have to interrupt because I interject rather, because what you say I've thought myself and I know what you're going to Tell me if what you're going to say is this. He was raised by white, par white grandparents, is that correct? That's right. Do you feel that some of his racial enmi en enmity towards white people is a result of this some kind of resentment that his father left him? Possibly, but I think it's also couched in terms of, of his, uh, his own personal identity. You mean, he's trying to, he's tr you mean he's trying to kill off one side of his heritage and identify only with the other? Well, I don't know that, that but he's, he's, I think he's got some, some, some very strong inner conflict going on that he's not even aware of. Of course, it's unconscious. And he's trying to make a resolution out on the world stage by recreating it. And by recreating the, the, the conflict, what you do is, is the conflict is, is, is inherently meant to fail. And all these things that he's involved in, they're all destructive, basically destructive acts, and they're, and they're designed to fail. Now, why is he so unstoppable if he's so unstable? 
stoppable by what the the, the government or the yeah, yeah why is there no why are there no checks and balances 